Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Christian from Christian's Crafty Adventures. Welcome, welcome. So if you are new to my channel, welcome to my channel. And please expect that you're going to be finding a lot of inspiration, especially if you want to bash your scrap stash. Anyways, if you've been here before, thank you so much for coming back. So as you can see in the thumbnail, we are going to be creating this adorable, adorable camera box. And it's going to have a matching double three by four accordion mini mini album on the inside this is the initial the initial one that i made the initial one sorry about that the initial one that i made is this one from obed marshall i use obed marshall collection and this is what it's going it looks like so this one right there and this one is it's a double three by four accordion so Right there, it has a lot of pockets, lots of pockets, and because it's an accordion, it has so many, many places to put pretty much everything. So you have two of that, and this one goes the same exact way. I have so many elements, tags right there this is like a pocket this one is so many like this definitely goes in the back also this could help you with your vacation look at that and then i totally forgot to show you this back part so this one has that one also so I mean, this paper collection is just absolutely gorgeous. You're going to have so much fun. This is the Obed Marshall collection, but we're going to be using the new um, Simple Stories collection called Safe Travels. And this is what we're going to be using and we're going to be creating today. So let's get started, guys. <laughs> First thing you're going to need, you're going to need a base paper. So this is our base paper and this is 12 by 10 inches. And this is going to be our base, which is the bottom one. And then this is going to be our lid. And for the lid, it is 6.5 by 10. So let's start scoring your base first, shall we? So let's talk about the base. For the base, at the 12 inch mark, you're going to score at 1, score at 5, score at seven and score at 11 and you're going to burnish all that you're going to turn and you're going to score at two inches and you're going to score at eight inches and you burnish all that with your score scoring tool all sides okay next you're going to get your lid and again your lid is six and a half by ten at the ten inch mark you're going to score at three quarters you're going to score at two you're going to score at eight and you're going to score at nine and a quarter. You're going to turn counterclockwise one time. And at the six and a half inch side, you're going to score at one. You're going to score two and a quarter. You're going to turn it and you're going to do the exact same thing. So you're going to score at one and two and a quarter for both sides. And again, you burnish all sides with your bone folder so that you have sharp creases. So that is the scoring. Now we're going to assemble. Very first thing you're going to do is you're going to identify, you can see the score marks. This is the score marks. This is the base paper. And this is the one inch score marks. And we're going to identify where are the reinforcements. So I know that this is a reinforcement. So I'm going to cut that and that right there and I know that this definitely folds this folds right okay next you're going to do the exact same thing for the other side because that's a reinforcement side right there okay next you're going to create a tab and this is going to be your middle portion okay so you're going to cut you're going to cut the tabs and you're going to create this one 
just like that okay that's your tab and this one you are going to cut this one you're going to remove that so as you can see create a tab okay you're gonna cut this just follow your score marks so this is what you have so far go to the other side and create your middle tab again okay create your tab okay so that's the first order of business now you've created your middle tabs right and this is going to be on the inside and then you cut this one and then you remove this side as well so as you can see you're already forming your base this is what it's going to look like okay this is what it's going to look like however however this specific side okay this is what it's going to look like you guys so what i suggest what i suggest is you snip this one just a little bit Right there just so it doesn't show up this is your inside portion whatever you're snipping that's gonna be your inside okay right there so now always always assemble the bottom base first so when it comes to assembling the bottom base you assemble you glue your reinforcement tabs first so this is what I'm doing. I'm just closing the tabs because I know that these are reinforcement tabs. Just to get them out of the way. Do the exact same thing for the other side. Because that's the purpose of that. It, it becomes less confusing if you do. Next. Okay. So you know that this one has been cut. That's the inside. Okay. So now you glue. Put glue here. That's your middle tab. And then you, okay, make sure that it's symmetrical. And then you glue this. Can you see it? I hope you can see it. So we're closing one side. Make sure that you're not leaving any blank spaces. You see how flush that is okay that is it and then make sure that you do the exact same thing right here you put this one first okay so put that to the side it's easier this okay get your the one that has the one that has like a tab because that's your inside portion okay next you close it so you add glue to this one and then you close that up always always create your base first now the base is done now the next part we're going to assemble the lid so we have to identify which is your reinforcement. So as you can see, this is your reinforcement. So you fold that. Okay, do the same thing for the other side. That's your reinforcement, so you fold that for sure. Right? And then, this is also your reinforcement. So you definitely fold that. <clears throat> just like that so that's what it's supposed to look like next part you are going to cut this and you're going to create a tab just like that create a tab just like that do the same exact thing for all the other sides cut create a tab and then snip so that's our steps. Cut. Create your tab. Snip. Last one. 
So you cut, create your tab, snip. That is it. Now we going we're going to assemble. So this is what it's going to look like. It's going to get reinforced and then this is what it's what is going to happen. So I suggest you attach these two sides first. Attach that and the other side as well. Right there. Okay. Next, you get your paper. <clears throat> I'm going to put my reinforcement right now. So, attach your reinforcement. Because always, always, when you assemble the lid portion, you have to have the base with you just so you can make the necessary adjustments if you need it. So this is what it's going to look like. Look. So see, this one goes in there. This one goes in there. You see what I mean? And this is what your box is going to look like. However... This, it's important that you put it together just like what I'm doing simply because it's like practice. You need to make sure if you need to kind of make any adjustments based on the thickness of the paper. So that's what I'm doing right now. I am just putting glue. I want to make sure that I make necessary adjustments if I need it. Because sometimes the paper is so thick that you have to attach it like that. And this one, since the paper is just regular um, regular scrapbook paper, it's not very thick. That's okay. That's okay because we put a lot of reinforcements on it. And so, so you're going to notice that it's going to, it's going to be perfect when it comes to there's no gaps and it's not so tight that you're unable to close the box right there ta-da so now your box is done right there so so easy it looks so clean and ready I love it <clears throat> so now we're going to make the shaker let me get the shaker elements guys so now we're talking about shakers <clears throat> if you haven't made a shaker before creating a shaker requires four elements okay so the background when it, which is you use paper and then this one is the decorative piece for the lens the acetate and your foam <clears throat> i use foam and this is foam from hobby lobby and the brand is silly winks it is a dollar forty nine for twelve for a twelve by eighteen. In this video, I'm going to put a link down below <clears throat> as to when it comes to this um, a stitch circle nesting die. If you want to create your own, um, I'm gonna put a link down below for you, as well as a link to the foam and poster board adhesive. <clears throat> I personally get this from. Um, Dollar Tree. If you don't have access to Dollar Tree, I'll send you a link from Amazon, okay? Um, it's a little bit on the thick side. <clears throat> because this is, has been inverted for a while in my craft room. But I'm sure if yours hasn't been inverted, <clears throat> it's going to be much better than mine. So just wipe it with like a paper towel. Because this one is better much much better than your regular glue if you have <clears throat> if you don't have any other option then obviously you use your glue so this one <clears throat> you attach your foam onto your base your decorative base right there make sure this glue allows you to kind of alter it and change it up a little bit don't forget to add your shaker elements okay because the first one is the base, the next is a foam. After the foam, you add your shaker elements and do not overfill it. Only fill probably one eighth of the capacity. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have my allergies. 
one eighth of the capacity because you don't want to overfill it. Okay, so that's that. I tend to fill it like crazy, which is to my detriment. So that's the third step. <clears throat> the base, the foam, the shaker elements. The fourth step is your acetate. I have put a link down below for the acetate as well of what I use. And so that will be easy for you to find. Okay. Next, you get your glue again. And you, atta <clears throat> and you attach your acetate sheet. Okay, right there, right there. <clears throat> so easy. I know most of you guys have already seen <clears throat> or you already know how to create a shaker. So this is just something for the new ones who hasn't created a shaker ever before. I was intimidated with shakers before too until i started making a lot of them and then after that it was like oh okay now i understand i remember last year i was so intimidated with shakers just last year before the pandemic <clears throat> so next you put your acetate and this is going to protect all your goodies from escaping <clears throat> in this part of the process i suggest that you become you be patient Okay, don't shake it yet because I know all I want to do is shake it, right? Don't do that. I get my wet glue, leave it alone, don't shake it. Try your best not to shake it. <clears throat> because if there's anything that's not dry yet, then you have dislodged it. <clears throat> Believe me, I learned my lesson. That's why I'm telling you all the tips because I've had all of the shaker elements strewn in my craft table. <clears throat> so that's the last part, which is your decorative piece. Right there. And we're going to wait for it to dry. Do not shake it. <clears throat> Try your hardest not to shake it, okay? So that's your shaker. Next, we're going to deal with a handle. And this is the handle for your camera box. You're going to need a 20 inch ribbon. And this is an inch thick. I am just closing this down. Just to make it a little bit on the neat side. Just like that. Okay. Just like that. <clears throat> and then you do the same exact thing. Make sure that it's the same direction. Good night, Lexi. Love you, bye. And then you put your glue. I always, always use my glue gun. And then you just fold it just so it's neat. This is going to be hidden. It's just better if you did that. Right there. Just like that. <clears throat> and then you're going to get your box. Let me move you a little bit further away. Okay, you're going to get your box. You have to determine which is your front and which is your back. I've determined that this is my front because this is where these are and I want that in the back. Okay, that's just a tip. <clears throat> so you're going to, you can either put a brad on it so it goes back and forth. That's your choice. But for purposes of demonstration, I am just going to attach it right here. I'm going to glue it. But you can put a brad definitely if you wanted to right there and then you're going to do the exact same thing on the other side <clears throat> just like that just so it's a little bit easier make sure that you're in the right area that's it that's the handle that's the handle for your camera box right there and then you're going to attach your, you're going to attach your, <clears throat> I'm going to turn this over. You're going to attach, you're going to attach your ca camera lens, okay? And the reason why I wanted to turn it over is because we're going to put a mark on where we want it. <clears throat> so this is a line. And the reason why we're doing that is because I want to make sure that the direction is here. The reason why is because we're going to do double-sided tape and we're not going to put double-sided tape up here. 
because we don't want to close your bag. We just want it down here. So what we're going to do is we're going, this is from the Dollar Tree. I am just going to double it up just like this. You can make it as thick as you like. It's up to you. But this, I'm comfortable this thick. <clears throat> and then I'm going to do a little bit more for the bottom. Just like that. Oops. So my plan is I'm going to put it right here. And I'm going to put it right here. Okay. <clears throat> and I'm going to follow the lines that I created. That's just a tip if you want if you want it to be not, if it's the right direction. So I'm going to check it first. So my RVs are all facing down because you don't want to attach it with the RV on the side, right? So that's good. We've checked that. And now, okay. We do that and then you peel this one also. Nice. Okay. And this one right there <clears throat> and then when you turn it over you're going to make sure before you attach it that this is the safest bet is, oops don't do that the safest bet is one half an inch from this base that is safe enough you get a clearing you can either put it on one side I like to put it in the center okay just to let you know, guys, I am going to be teaching this class at a, at a June retreat for Three Craft Chicks. If you want to sign up, I'm going to put a link down below for Three Craft Chicks for you. Um, it's going to be a retreat and I'm going to be part of their instructor pool. So this is what I'm going to be teaching you how to do. We're going to have Zoom classes and you will be provided a kit if you want to sign up for the kit. And we will provide you all the materials to create this camera bag, as well as a 3x4 double accordion album that you will put inside this. So, this is done. This is your basic camera box, but I took the liberty. I didn't decorate it because I only had one sheet of 12x12. 12 12, but I took the liberty of decorating it with the sticker sheet of the 12x12. 12 12. And look, I just put some pony beads that I got from Michaels in an eraser from the 99 cents. And all these are from the 12x12 12 12 sticker sheet. So I just layered it up. Some of them are in with double-sided. Some of them are laid directly. And all these stickers are coming from, are coming from the 12x12 12 12 sheet. These, these are just pony beads. You know, you can determine whatever you want to decorate it. But this is done. Absolutely done, done, done. So now your camera is ready to go. It's ready to store your 3x4 mini album. So this is done. Thank you so much. Um, now we're going to create the 3x4 um, double mini album. Okay, just a moment. 